years later. My father worked at U.S. Steel Fairfield Works Division and located, and that was located near the Bessemer area. My mom was a housewife, and I uh, had a bigger brother on the way. I was about five years old at this time. I came down with what we call the double pneumonia. I ended up in the only hospital that would take me at that time, according to my parents. That hospital was uh, Holy Family, which uh, the building still exists. I remember having to sleep in, a, in an iron lung. Technology today is different. They don't use iron lungs today. You see, with both lungs collapsed, you can't breathe very long. And so they would put you in a pressurized long tube. Your head would be sticking out, and the pressure would keep your lungs open so you could breathe. The doctor said that I could be like a spaceman. My mom brought me a wonderful bumper toy helicopter. For those who don't know what the bumper cars and toys are, these are things that you put out and they flash and roll and bump and they turn different ways. Now, I wasn't supposed to get out of the bed when they put me in bed. I started the toy and placed it on the floor. And out of the door, the copter whirled to my surprise. I looked up and I heard a mother nurse scream, Stephen, Lord Jesus. Now, this was a Catholic hospital. And this lady raised a huge cross. And I thought it was a pick. And I thought she was coming at me with this pick. But she was praying for me as I was just being a child and running out with the toy. One month later, I was healed and back home in near Bessemer. My education began late because of my birthday. In 1958, I attended Paul Lawrence Dunbar Elementary School which is now located in Bellsman, and the building is still there. Now, this was the same year that Hart Elementary School caught fire. And with that school catching fire, it displaced over 800 students. Dunbar, Dunbar's enrollment was doubled to accommodate the Hart School students and faculty. This temporary measure required that Dunbar students would have to attend school from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. And that's just, just the first page of my memoir, so I don't know how exciting that can be, but uh, it, it is to me because it's part of my, my life. I've been an, uh, an artist all, all of my days. I, as a child, um, I always wanted to make things. Uh, my father could draw and sculpt. My mother was a seamstress. She could make anything that she saw. My mother was a very large lady. You can probably look at me and tell you that. Uh, my mother was a mud deer. When I, when I saw the movie Mud Deer, I said, oh, that's, that's nothing on my mom. So my mom was about 6'4 six, six, and uh, had blonde hair even back in the 60s. So, but my mother was very supportive. Parents were supportive. Um, I got a, in the, in the seventh grade, I won um, first place in the state of Alabama, an art contest. By, uh, and the winner represented the state of Alabama. And this was around 1964. It was at the height of the Civil Rights Movement. And I'll be coming full circle to talking a little bit about some things I've done with paintings about the Civil Rights Movement. But the painting won and went to New York City and stayed there a year. And uh, no major newspapers covered the story. Uh, it was only two black papers at that time, uh, Birmingham, the Birmingham World, and we still have the Birmingham Times. The Birmingham World doesn't exist anymore, but it was the oldest paper. The Birmingham World took a picture of me, took a picture of me, and, and I, I still go to the archives just to pull it up every now and then and look at the microfiche. And you'll see a picture of me in a bow tie and I was you know, young. 
But I've always encountered uh, creative people. Uh, God has been good. Um, moving a little fast past the New York experience, having my work selected and, and being representative of the state of Alabama, um, that was a beginning part of my high life. There's some other things I'll be putting in, in my memoirs as I tell my story that I want to tell you all of them. I will give you this little note. Um, Diana Ross, the entertainer, uh, visited uh, A.G. Gasson where I attended. And at that time, I had a, a bust of Martin Luther King. And for, for my age and my talent, I, I, I was told I was exceptionally talented. And uh, I was one week away from that, that, that statue being in the Jet magazine. However, something happened at school. Uh, two young men got to fighting in the library. And there went Martin King's head. And it was totally destroyed. And so uh, opportunities like that and disappointments come. But it, anyway, moving fast forward to um, high school, I attended one on high school. I tell people I'm an old dragon. Uh, and I can, I can still do the dragon strip. Uh, <laughs> But don't mess with an old, old, old dragon. But anyway, I played football at Winona and uh, had some very productive years there uh, at Winona. I painted the first uh, dragon for Winona High School, and it was in the old gym. Um, did a lot of firsts, I'd like to think. Um, but anyway, I went on and uh, I met a lady, um, a white lady, who was seeking out talent. And um, she couldn't afford to send me to school at that time. But she had a friend in Mountain Brook who paid for, who paid for the two years tuition here at Lawson. And I have a passion for teaching. There were no art scholarships. Now, this lady, I wasn't her first art choice. Uh, let me explain. There was a young man named Larry Kirkland. He was a Jackson Olin uh, high school uh, student, exceptionally talented. And uh, he was the first black to receive a, a full art scholarship from the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. However, there was a tragic accident. Uh, he was in the car with four or five of his friends, Some, one or two were killed, and Larry was paralyzed from the, from the head down. And the first thing that this lady uh, asked me to do was to go and visit Larry Kirkland in the hospital, which was Holy Family Hospital. And the moment I walked in that room, I realized how blessed I was and how Larry wanted to love, he loved art so much. Larry would tie paintbrushes to his hands. He could move his hands just a little bit. And he would paint with his hands. He continued to draw by putting a pencil in his mouth. Uh, and I did visit him up until his death. Um, and so I knew that I could not fail. Uh, and I went on and attended uh, the University of Alabama. Wasn't on scholarship. Uh, however, uh, I was blessed. And had no idea that I would have an opportunity to come back and be an instructor here at Lawson State. Uh, I worked at Miles College, uh, started in 77, was there to 88, 1988, and I was asked to paint uh, a, a black history bus for Max Transit Authority, which was a big task. I had one week to do it, and um, my best art student had, had already graduated, so I ended up doing it myself. But I didn't get paid for it, but I, I would like to think that that one bus led to me getting the opportunity to come and to work here at Lawson State. And so I've been here ever since uh, 1988. Um, the painting, that, the two paintings you see here, uh, this painting is a painting of uh, our fantastic music and choir director's parents. This is Mrs. Bessie Shelton, mom and dad. Uh, those that don't, may not know it, um, 
her father passed away and they had the funeral last uh, summer. Uh, and so uh, I just told Bessie that I would do the sheltering, that I would do a portrait of her parents. This is Windsor and Ruth Ideal Hunter. And uh, this painting is done, uh, the medium is gouache. Uh, it's done with, uh, it's kind of like tempera paint, but it has a white uh, base paint added to each color. And um, when you do a portrait, I, I had a picture from, um, believe it or not, uh, I was, it was sent to me through email. And of course, uh, being an artist, you have to learn how to enhance people, make them look uh, a little better, you know, slim them down, put a little uh, youth and vitality into them. And you would not think that these, this couple was, they were in their 80s. And they're a good, they were, they were good looking, you know, great, great person. But, uh, so that's gouache. This painting here of, uh, a lot of people don't know, this painting here is of Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix is, is, in my opinion, probably one of the greatest guitar uh, performers, players to ever live. I don't think we'll ever have anyone else that's great as Jimi Hendrix. This was painted in 1976. This was the year that I graduated from the, the University of Alabama. I always tell this story. Um, I was attending school with Daniel Moore. Now, Daniel Moore, for those that don't know who Daniel Moore is, if you've ever seen any Alabama prints, limited edition prints, more than likely Daniel Moore painted those prints. We were in class together. Uh, and while Danny was painting Bear Bryant, I was painting Jimi Hendrix because that's where my mind was. I, I try to understand now, sometimes young people's minds are into music of Tupac or uh, Andre 3000 or Common or wh whatever, but I was, I was hooked on Jimi Hendrix, okay? And so I used a black and white photograph to paint Hendrix and uh, added all the colors. And, and Jimi's colors, his favorite colors were turquoise. And so I kind of adapted that too. For those that don't notice, I do have on a turquoise shirt today. And, you know, <laughs> and, and matching tie. So turquoise is, is one of my favorite colors. So, so it was with Jimmy. He loved the stones, turquoise, jewelry, and stones. So this was done uh, the year I graduated from the University of Alabama. Uh, I've done about 10 murals. A mural is a painting uh, on a wall in the church mostly. I've done 10 here in Birmingham. Uh, I would have had 11, but church, one church decided to paint over the mural. Uh, and I had to forgive them for that, but anyway. Uh, but the latest mural that I did was at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. And it's located in Inslee. Uh, it's the first time I, I did a mural where you paint and there was no furniture in the church. It was a brand new facility. And I'll tell you, uh, even though I am a minister, there's nothing more close to me to being to God when I'm painting. And it's just me and God, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, painting uh, hours and hours on time. Yeah, I have done uh, Friendship Baptist Church, just to mention a few, which is located in Parker Springs. Uh, Roosevelt City, First Baptist of, uh, there in Roosevelt City. Uh, and then in the Roosevelt area in Cairo, uh, St. Luke Baptist Church. So those are just a few places where you can see the murals. Sometimes I think art ends up like being like furniture. And don't take this wrong. You know, when you get a new piece of furniture, you're proud of it. You, you, you walk in from a tired day and you think about how hard you worked and you got that piece of furniture and you come in, you think about that furniture and, and, you, and you earn that furniture because you spent your money to, to, to get that piece of furniture. And then you may sit down on and just think and relax and think about how wonderful the furniture is. But after a week or two or a year, you just come in and you walk right past the furniture. And a lot of people sometimes look at art that way. And I feel that people that would just take the time and get experience with learning about art, it would make your life so much better. Uh, you can understand things a lot better. Art is an, an avenue, for me, it's, a, it's an out. Uh, it's a way to relax. Uh, when I'm stressed, uh, when I've, I've had a pretty rough day, I'm thinking about drawing or sculpting. 
I've done some sculpture too. Back in, uh, back in I think, 90, the 90s, we had Shirley Chisholm to come to Lawson and to give a, a collection of her books to Lawson State. And so Dr. Ward asked me, and, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Dr. Ward is our president, and, and we're happy, I'm happy to see our vice president, Dr. Uh, Bruce Crawford here. Uh, Dr. Ward asked me if I could do a sculpture of Miss Chisholm. And so I set out to do it. And uh, I, I did, and I have a five-piece mold where I can reproduce Shirley Chisholm anytime I want. I, um, I gave uh, the Civil Rights Institute a copy of this, the bust, and they have it in their permanent collection. Uh, I did a civil rights piece uh, based on Charles Moore's uh, photograph. Have you ever seen this powerful image of, of these teenagers grouped up against a wall, and the fire hoses are pressing water on them? I did a painting of those, that situation. And, did a four foot by four foot image of that. And I donated that to the Civil Rights Institute, not knowing that they would celebrate uh, uh, 20 years of their art collection. And so um, last year in January, um, they hung a 25 foot banner of the image that I painted off the side front of the Civil Rights Institute. And I just thought I had just died and gone to heaven. I just didn't. Uh, and so, um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged to have been, been able to attend Lawson State, uh, to work here at Lawson State. And um, we, we, we've had several students to come through. Miss um, Dent, uh, she probably wouldn't like me to tell it. April Dent, uh, I always encourage all of, uh, former students and anyone to paint. Mrs. Dent uh, did this piece here. Mrs. Dent is a former student of mine at Lawson State, and she is now teaching here at Lawson, uh, right next to me. So uh, this is another one of Mrs. Dent's works right here, April Dent. You can read about her, and uh, she teaches art appreciation. Uh, and then her brother, Kenneth Dent, um, went on to, to the University of Alabama, uh, got his BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and then he, he, he moved over to Georgia Southern, and receive his MFA. And a lot of people don't know this, but a Master's of Fine Arts is pretty much the equivalent to a doctorate in education or the arts. You can see some of Kenny's work if you get a chance to peep inside of the Ebony Room. You'll see um, there's a mural that, that's on the wall. Kenneth had never done a mural before, so I, I always taught my students by showing them this is how you do things. And so you'll see a huge image of uh, W.E. Du Bois. And W.E. Du Bois, uh, that image is the huge head I painted. And of course, everything else around that was painted by uh, Kenneth Dent. Uh, and uh, Dent is doing well. Uh, at this time, I'd like to entertain some questions, if that's OK. Uh, I could talk all day and all night. Uh, I always tell people there's no set uh, answer for what art is or what art is not. Because as you learn from culture to culture, uh, art means different things to different cultures. So if there, if there are any questions at this time, I, I will uh, entertain questions. If not, I have a uh, Macintosh here, and I can kind of roll, uh, just play loop uh, some of the image of some of the work that I've, additional work that I've done. Um, I, I, I encourage people to uh, participate, and we're doing good. Um, t it took me two years to encourage Dr. Thomas. Uh, Dr. Thomas is a great artist, and she's doing great. So she said, I'm, I'm going to exhibit this time. Uh, I think she exhibited last year, I think. And uh, we have, you need to understand, too, we, we have our exhibits, when I say we, the library, and I'd like to thank Mrs. Ms. Henderson, a uh, dear friend of mine, for setting this up and bringing the arts right in to the library. And it's very fitting for, for that to happen. Um, at the library in, on the Bessemer campus, we have an exhibit there. And so I'd just like to just thank, say thank you publicly, Ms. Henderson, for, for, just, for just being there and appreciating the arts. Um, 
and uh, I'll put the computer on here and just kind of play it a little bit. You can, walk, you can come up and just stand there and look if you want to look at some of the works that I've done. So, but I've enjoyed uh, coming. Uh, I don't think there's nothing. I get excited talking about art. Um, there are a lot of upcoming people. There's a young man at the School of Fine Arts, a young black man. He is 16 years old. And I, I can see he is gonna, he's going to be a great artist. Alabama has a lot of great talent. Um, I'll just mention a couple of people. Uh, one I always bring up, portrait artist, um, Simeon Knox. Simeon Knox is from Dr. Crawford's uh, area of uh, Pickens, Pickens County. And uh, Simi is a professional portrait painter. He's black. Uh, and Simi did the portrait of Bill Clinton. You know, paintings hang in the White House, right? And so, Simi did the he was the first black artist to do a portrait of, of the President of the United States. And so, uh, we have a lot of history here. There's a lot of young ladies uh, and young men that are uh, in our encouraging. 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 Okay? All right, are there any questions? Hey, thanks. Hey, what inspires you to continue year after year after year. You, you've done some beautiful work. Thank you. But what keeps you going? Um, it's my connection I, I would like to thank with, with God. It's uh, my spiritual father. He keeps me grounded. Um, I don't think, well, I don't think a whole lot when I'm, I'm creating. I'm in the creative mode. But it's that connection, spiritual. It's a spiritual connection with him. And um, regardless of, uh, I was told by my grandmother and grandparents uh, that I was special. You know, they didn't say, they didn't call me special. But um, I've, I've just had people to to help me that just stepped out on faith and helped me. And uh, I didn't mention this. But I'll say it, I was fortunate, you got to think about this, most black schools hardly have art. They may have music, but they hardly have art teachers. But I was blessed from the elementary school all the way through high school to have an art instructor. And I guess if I could give homage to anyone, that would be uh, Miss Geraldine Edwards, who, who is deceased now, but uh, saw a lot in, in, in my ability and in my talent. So I get my inspiration from God uh, and, and people. I love being around people. Uh, it's hard to balance out when, when, you, when you have a job that is demanding, it's is good to have a job. And the job demands a lot of time. Uh, I look forward to one day, maybe when uh, you know, I'm retired, semi-retired, uh, where I can just spend more time with God. That's the best way I can put it. Just spend more time creating and, and doing works for God. Thank you for the question. Okay. Well, on the behalf of the Learning Resource Center, we'd okay. like to thank you for oh, wow. doing get, this every Black History Month for Ooh. us and especially coming to speak for us today. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Thank you, the library. Come on, we'll take you to Miss Shelton's, uh, let's say I start about six months.